Come on in, come on in. Come on and bless you, bless you, bless you. Uh, God bless you, Dick. God bless you. There we are. God bless you. Come on in. Thank you so very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all so very much for coming. Come on in. Bless you, Mother Gail. Bless you. It's okay. Thank you. I was trying to make a pen. If you show me how to do it. There we go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm excited. I'm excited. Is that on for me? Thank you so much. Is it on? Yes. Turn it for me if you would. So thank you. I, I need that. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Bless you, Deacon Blaine. Great day, sir. Elder Campbell, God bless you. Hey, my dear cousin Felicia. Hey, precious. Hey, Ty. God bless you. God bless you. Come on in. Share. Send up some hearts. Amen. Let's speak back and forth to each other. Bless you, Elder Anderson. God bless you. Sister Angie, bless you too, Elder Campbell. That's right. I love you more. I love you more. Sister Angie, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Others are coming in. We're going to give it a few moments. Give it a few moments. Let some other ones come on in. Thank you all so much. Bless you, Arnett. It's that time, it's the seven o'clock hour on Wednesday, on Wednesday. Thank y'all so much. God bless you, God bless you. Thank you so, so very much. Amen. Good evening to you, Arnett. Good evening. Good evening, come on in. Come on in. Amen, amen to God be all of the glory. God bless you. Love you so much. Yes, I do. I miss you all immensely. I believe God is going to bless us real good tonight. Thank you all so much. Hallelujah. On behalf of First Lady and I, we love you to life. God bless you. I'm going to get First Lady to teach. Amen. One of these Wednesdays or Saturdays. Let me adjust my seat here. Amen. I've been trying to get her down here. Amen. God bless you. Life-changing family. That's right, Ty. We are all family. We are all family. Mother Gail, love you too. Yeah, First Lady going to teach one of these Wednesdays or Saturdays when we come together. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, my cousin Sadie. I love you so much. Good to see you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. Give everyone our love, please. We're going to go right into the word in a few more minutes here. Amen. Bless you, Elder Cochran. Man, I was thinking about you today. Love you much, man. Love you much. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Stacy. God bless you. Sometimes my chest is too low, so I have to raise the chair. Mother Anderson, God bless you. God bless you. I love you too. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Please make sure we share and send up some hearts and likes. Amen. Talk back to me if you can. Talk back to me if you can. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Yes. Give him a chance. Give him a few more minutes. A few more moments. Maybe about another 35, 40 seconds. Trust you all are doing well. How y'all doing today? Mother Davis, I love you. God bless you. How y'all doing today? Love you too, Sadie. Amen. Aunt Jackie, somebody let me know how you're doing. Good evening to you, Aunt Jackie. Always in our prayers. Always in our prayers. Hey, Aunt Cookie, God bless you. Good, thank you. Tanya Kelly, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in with us. I trust you'll be very, 
very blessed today. Is that a word, very blessed? Am I saying that right? Trust you'll be blessed immensely. There we go. All is well. Sister Stacy, you're doing good. All is well. Scott G, out on the West Coast. What's up, big bruh? Bless you. You're doing well. You're doing well, Mother Gail. Amen. That's good to hear. Mama, I love you. I love you. Love you too, Mother Davis. Good. You're doing well, Aunt Jackie. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's up, Ramon? My man. Love you, man. Miss you in first. Yeah, I miss you all too. I'm sorry. I'm going to say I miss you in first officer. <laughs> miss you all too. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're doing well, Deacon Kearns. Amen. Me and the first family, we're doing good. We're doing good. Everybody on this end is doing fine. Amen. First Lady, DJ and Jazzy, all of us are doing well. Thank you all so very much for your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, Elder Cockwood, I appreciate the compliments, man. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have another birthday coming up, man. Thank you for remembering. Thank you so much. God has been good to us. God has been good to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious and eternal Father, we love you and we thank you. You've been so good to us. You've been so kind to us. God, we thank you because you keep on keeping us. You lay us down every night and you wake us up in the mornings. And for that, God, we say thank you. God, we thank you for shelter over our heads and clothing on our backs. We thank you for food on our tables. God, we thank you for shoes on our feet, God. God, we bless you and we love you, God, because there's nobody like you on all of the earth. And we just want to say thank you. Now, God, even as we send up hearts and lights, that's right. Yeah, yeah, as we send up hearts and lights, as praise unto you, God. I know they're opening up their mouths and they're blessing you. But God, as we send up hearts and lights, God, telling you thank you and that we love you and you're the best thing that's ever happened to us. God, we thank you right now for being so merciful and so kind. Now, God, bless your people tonight as they log in, as they chime in, Father. God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. For this we say thank you and we bless you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen, I want to make a few observations, just a few observations before uh, I move right into the word of the Lord. The Lord has laid upon my heart, the Lord has laid upon my heart uh, to ask each and every one of you all uh, with your families uh, to do a family prayer about three times a day. Not about three times a day, but at least three times a day. Maybe that morning, sometime that afternoon, and perhaps that evening three times a day, if you would be so kind to do a family prayer, prayer, I really believe that God will be pleased and honored with that. All right? Uh, so family prayer, just between you and your family, just between you and your family, whether you all have to text each other, call each other, whatever the case may be, you may have family that's here and down south in Florida or North Carolina or out on the West Coast. Okay, what I would like you to do is do a family prayer. The Lord laid that upon my heart. Okay, reach out to your loved ones. I know many of you all have been praying anyway, but I want you to do this, okay? According to 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, come together and just begin to pray. That would mean so much. That would mean so much. And just don't pray for you, you're for no more. I said it to First Lady before I came down. I said, sweetie, God is calling for a more intimate prayer with him, a more intimate time of prayer with him. I know sometimes when we pray together as a family, uh, we address the necessities and we address some things that are pregnant and, and, and uh, important to us, some essential things. But, but I want you to stay there, you know, give, give yourself some time. Say, hey, listen, we want to have a 30 minute or 25 minute or one hour family prayer and just go after God. Just begin to seek God and you'll watch and see what God will do. You'll watch and see what God will do. Hey, mama, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you and you and I are going to spend some time in prayer. I'm talking about my biological mother. She's a praying woman, and I mean that, mama. I mean that, and uh, I appreciate that. And so if you all would do that, connect with your families and just begin to pray and, and watch and see what God will do for you. All righty? If you're going to do that, send up some hearts and likes. Let me know that you agree with that, and I appreciate that greatly, greatly, greatly. All right, send up some hearts and likes. 
and let me know that you don't mind praying with your family. And you're going to call your family together. There we go. You're going to call your family together in prayer. I appreciate that. Thank you so, so very much. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Here, let me make another observation. Uh, it's not my intent to be long tonight. We're not long any time, okay? Uh, but I want to give you this here. I want to give you this here. Uh, the Lord laid upon my heart to share this with you before we go into our lesson concerning tithing and offering. And I know some of you all say, my God, this man has no problem talking about tithing and offering, and neither should you. You shouldn't have a problem talking about tithing and offering, and you shouldn't have a problem giving of your tithing and of your offering. Shouldn't be a problem. But this is what the Bible says. We give not grudgingly nor of necessity, but with a cheerful heart. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave. And so therefore, we should give. And it, should, it shouldn't be hard for you to give because you love God. It's not hard for him to give to you because he loves you. And I'm saying this, and some of you all who are watching, you know, uh, thank you for your sowing. Thank you for your tithing. Thank you for your offering. Amen. But you're giving it unto the Lord. I want you to hear this. And you should tithe to your local church on a consistent basis. On a consistent basis. Just because you tithe three times a year doesn't make you a tither. You should tithe on a consistent basis. Here, I have 10 reasons why we should tithe. I want to give, give you a few of them. According to Malachi 3 and 10 and Matthew 23 and 23, it is biblically approved for us to tithe, both in the Old and New Testament. Malachi 3 and 10 and Matthew 23 and 23. Number two here, it shows our love towards God, according to Songs of Solomon 8 and 7. Alrighty, here's the last one I give you. It demonstrates that we are putting God first. Matthew 6, 33. Now, I want you to understand this here. Hear me good, hear me good. Don't rob God. Don't rob God. Don't rob God. Honor God with the first. I know, you said, Bishop, we're right in the middle of a pandemic. Are you serious? We're right in the middle of a pandemic and you're talking about tithing? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. The Bible says that in the midst of a pandemic, Isaac sowed. In the midst of a famine, Isaac sowed. And in the same year, God blessed him with a hundredfold harvest. So don't let the devil rob you. Don't let the devil fool you and make you think, you know what? I don't have to tithe. I can do my own thing, this, that, and the other. You know, nobody's saying too much now. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. But I want you to understand something. Thank you for agreeing with me. All right? You have to honor God first. That's right, Elder Cockerman. This is the best time to sow. This is the best time to sow. This is the best time to sow. Don't miss this opportunity. This is the best time to sow. All right? And so all of you all who are tithing on a consistent basis, on a regular basis, thank you so much. And, and God's blessings be upon you. But then there are those you're kind of hitting and missing or just not doing it at all. Okay? Let me say this here. I'm praying that God will continue to show. Watch this here. The Bible says it is the goodness of the Lord that brings us to repentance. I'm praying that God will bless you even the more. And that you understand that, guess what? You can't rob God and win. And we're going to do this because we love him. So I want you to take the opportunity to sow. I want you to do that, all right? If you don't have a church home and you're watching, and you know, you know, I'm not a part of a church home, and that doesn't exempt you from tithing, okay? Let me tell you something right now. Life Changing Christian Center is good ground. It's good ground. Life Changing Christian Center is good ground. And I'm telling you now, Hear me good. You can sow into this ministry and it will bless you immensely. Oh, I got people who are watching can give you testimonies. Sow into this ministry and it will bless you. That's right, Sister Nikki. God first. That's right, Elder Campbell. God first. This is what we've always been teaching and what we live by. And God always backs his word up. All righty. Uh, the cash app is dollar sign life changing one. That's the cash app. Dollar sign, life-changing one. I put the pin up. This is my first time doing this. I'm still learning this, and I thank God for this, you know, that we're able to come together 
Amen. So I put the pin up. I don't know if you're able to tap on the pin and see more of it, but it's on there. Dollar sign, life changing one. Take the opportunity to sow. Take the opportunity to sow. Dollar sign, life changing one. Or you can go to the church website, lifechangingcc.info. Okay. Uh, and then also you can go to Givelify, Life Changing Christian Center. All right. So I, I want you to get this here. All righty. Uh, God is waiting to bless you like you've never been blessed before, but you got to bless him back. You got to bless him back. You got to bless him back. He's been so good to us. So let's bless him. Let's bless him. All righty. Thank you so, so very much. I love you and I appreciate you. Thank you, Sister Stacy. I appreciate that. Thank you. That that warms my heart. That warms my heart. Thank you so very much. All righty. Listen, I want to go into the word of the Lord. I want to go into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the bread of life. Break it that we all may eat and leave here full in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all so, so very much. All right. Let's go to Matthew chapter number eight. Matthew chapter number eight. Matthew chapter number eight. Uh, I do best when I've been teaching Amen. Or I'm going to teach and preach. I will to teach tonight what I've been praying. All righty. I'm kind of getting more comfortable with uh, coming to you uh, on this uh, avenue. So I, I appreciate your patience and thank you so, so very much. I, I really do. Thank you so, so very much. Hey, my cousin Marie. Hey, precious. Good to see you. Good to see you. That's my Aunt Sadie's baby. Amen. God bless you. All righty. Matthew chapter number eight. Let's go in here. I want to talk about two things the Lord has laid upon my heart. Uh, if you're taking notes, I hope that you are. And I trust that you will allow this teaching to set a prayer agenda for you. Okay. I want to talk about deliverance and forgiveness. That's what the Lord has laid upon my heart to give you tonight. Deliverance and forgiveness. All right, I'm going to go old school. Let's look at our Bible bases, our Bible bases. This is how, you know, I'm a Sunday school baby. This is how I grew up learning how to teach the word of the Lord. Bless you, Pastor Burroughs. Amen. Pastor Derek, man, you're blessing me. You are blessing me there at the well. I, I mean that. I mean that. You know, let me say this to you. I tell you all sometimes, be careful who you listen to. Don't let everybody feed your spirit. Amen. Pastor Derek comes on at six o'clock on Sundays. You guys can look him up. You have my permission. He's a safe place. The Whale Worship Center. Thank you so very much, Pastor. And I enjoy you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Sometimes during the day uh, at 11 o'clock, I hope that Bishop is still coming on. Bishop Petrina Stedman. Uh, I don't mind announcing this and sharing this. Okay. Uh, check her out. She comes on with a powerful word. She's a safe place already. And I, and I mean that. Okay. So catch Pastor Derek on Sundays at 6 p.m. And uh, you can catch Bishop Stedman at 11. Uh, I think Bishop comes on every day at 11. Okay. Right here on Facebook Live. So look her up and you can catch her there. Hey, Bonnie. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Somebody's been praying because I can see your comments a little bit better. Sometimes I can't see them without my glasses, but I can see them a little bit better. All right. Are you there at Matthew chapter number eight? Matthew chapter number eight. I'm talking about deliverance and forgiveness just for a few moments and uh, we'll move on. All right. This is what he says in verse number 28. And when he was come to the other side, catch that there, into the country of the Gadarenes. All right. Uh, this is what he said. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not the Gadarenes. The uh, Gergensens. All right. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. When he would come to the other side, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. Watch this here. Exceeding fierce so that no man might pass by that way. All righty. Uh, look what he says here. And behold, they cried out saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God, art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way far from them, a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him saying, if thou would cast us out, suffer us not to go away into, her, into the herd of swine. All right. And he said unto them, go. All right, and then look at Matthew 9. Look at Matthew chapter number 9. I want you to get this here. Uh, verse number 1, And he entered into a ship and passed over and came unto his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, Jesus, seeing their faith, 
said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. All righty. Now, I'm going old school for you. I'm almost done. That's our, that's our Bible basis. All righty. That's our Bible basis. But here's the Bible truth that I want to give you. Uh, the Bible truth is that Jesus has authority and power for total deliverance and forgiveness. This is our Bible truth that Jesus has authority and power for total forgiveness and deliverance, for total deliverance and forgiveness, that both being spiritual and physical, all right? Now, now Matthew 28, 18 proves this. It says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Oh, these are Jesus's words. He says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And this is our Bible truth. Get this here in your spirit that Jesus has all authority and power. He has all authority and power for deliverance and forgiveness, for deliverance and forgiveness. All right, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Look at Ephesians chapter number one. Ephesians chapter number one. I trust that you have armed yourself, amen, with something to write with. Ephesians chapter number one. You know, it seems like every time I come on, it start getting hot in this house. You feel that, David? Mm -hmm. My God, I don't know what they doing. I'm like They must be in there cooking with the oven open. I know they watching it, but it's like every time I come in, it just start getting hot. I've been sitting in this office a few hours it ain't been this hot, man. I'm trying to tell you it's hot as July. All right. Ephesians chapter one, verse number 18 through 23. It says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. All righty. And what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. This is where I want to get you right now. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Here it is. Toward us, to us ward is what the Bible says. Who believe? They're still trying to cause you to understand that Christ has all power. He has total power for forgiveness and deliverance according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. When he raised him from the dead and is set on the right hand, on, uh, right hand in heavenly places. You know, I was telling my son, this the other day, ain't nobody here but us, we just talking. I'm telling my son this the other day, I said, son, let me tell you something. You know, you watch these preachers who always preach what they call the gospel and never mention the name of Jesus. Never say nothing about Jesus. Never say anything about his, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. I said, now you you older, I don't, you know, I realize you want to encourage the people but at some, some time, you need to be looking, you know, where, where's Jesus in this thing? I feel the Holy Ghost in the midst of this heat. Where's Jesus in this thing? All righty. And so Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know, let me tell you something here. Every time I say that name, I, I just feel something moving when I say that. You know, if, you know, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Sick bodies are healed at the name of Jesus. Deaf ears unstopped, dumb tongues loose. Oh, the lame walk, the dumb talk, the blind see at the name of Jesus. And so I want you to understand something, beloved. You can't preach the gospel and not say nothing about him. You got to say something about him. You got to say something about him. All right, let me get off here. Watch this here. Jesus has all authority. He has all authority for total deliverance, for total deliverance, all righty, and forgiveness. That's both spiritually and physically. Now, here's the memory verse. I told you I'm going old school Church of God in Christ teaching here. Watch this here. Here's the memory verse. The memory verse is Matthew 9 and 2. That part where Jesus speaks. Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Get that there. You don't have to be deep and spooky. The word is the word. It'll teach all by itself. All right, you ain't got to add nothing to it and try to make it all deep and spooky. God bless you, Mother Lucy. Thank you so kindly for tuning in. All righty. Now, uh, I want you to understand our lesson aim, and then I'm going to go ahead and start closing this here. Our lesson aim is that you and I would gain confidence. This is our lesson aim. 
gain confidence in Christ's power for deliverance and forgiveness. That's what I want to aim at. You got to aim at something is that you and I would gain a greater confidence, a greater confidence in Christ's power. That's right. For deliverance and forgiveness. You know, if we was all together in the tabernacle, I'd say, y'all say that. Deliverance and forgiveness. And it seemed like when y'all were said, it was like a wave would go across the go across the church and you start feeling like a rumbling and, and things start happening in the realm of the spirit. That's our lesson aim. You got the memory verse, Matthew 9, and you have our basis for our scripture for our lesson, Matthew 28. Alrighty, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Our lesson, Matthew 8 and Matthew 9. All right, let me close here. Let me close. God said, God said to me. God said to me, I'm coming on down. God said to me that we are moving into a day. We're moving into a day or days. I want to say it right. We're moving into a time. We're moving into a season of manifested deliverance and healing and forgiveness. We're moving into that. You'll see manifested deliverance, healing, and forgiveness. But I want to deal with deliverance and forgiveness you, you, you'll see that here. Now, deliverance is defined as uh, rescuing from bondage, rescuing from peril, rescuing from danger. I want you to get this here. Deliverance is defined as rescuing us from danger, bondage, and peril. Uh, deliverance in the Bible is the act of God whereby he rescues his people. He rescues us. Uh, in the Old Testament, let me give you a little more foundation here. In the Old Testament, deliverance is focused primarily on God's removal of those from the midst of trouble, danger, and bondage. When you start going into the Old Testament, you know, let me put a little pin here. I spend a lot of time here in this office here praying in the realm of the spirit and just praying and studying the word of the Lord. And since the time of this pandemic, you know, both my son and my daughter, they've been coming down here and they'll sit here with me and not just for no two, three minutes, neither. They'll sit here with me for a little bit and they start asking me questions about the Old Testaments and, and the New Testaments. And I'm telling you, uh, one time they sat in here with me, it just overjoyed my heart that God had touched their heart and begin to, you know, have them to ask questions about the Old Testament. Well, what about the Old Testament? What about the New Testament? And even while we study this lesson on deliverance here, watch this, and forgiveness, when you look into the Old Testament, deliverance is focused primarily on God removing us, God pulling us out. We're in places of trouble, in places of danger. Now, in the New Testament, God is always the subject. Hear me good. He's always the subject, and his people are always the object of his deliverance. So by the power of God, we as believers are delivered. I want you to get this here. Now, I want you to understand something here, because God the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. According to Galatians 1 and 4, we as believers are delivered from the present day evil. We are delivered from the evil that is going on in the present. You need this here because, you know, you, you see in the news and stuff, and if you, you're not careful, this stuff will have you thinking that you're on the wrong side of the fence. But Galatians 1 and 4 says, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world. Oh, my God, my God. World can't do you no harm. World can't do you no harm. I don't care what they, what they say. World can't do you no harm. God, uh, Colossians 1.13 says, Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. Oh, my God. We are delivered. We are being delivered. And we shall be delivered. World can't do me no harm. You got to get that in your spirit. World can't. Saints of old, you say, This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have. Well, didn't give it to me. Oh, yes, this joy that I have, yeah, Lord. Well, didn't give it to me. Oh, well, didn't give it. Well, can't take it away. Good God Almighty. I tell you, we was in the tabernacle. Maestro Dre Jones would have hit right on top of that there, and y'all would have been dancing and shaking and rocking and shaking and rocking and shaking. But I tell you, all oh, this peace that I have, whoo, I better leave it alone. 
world didn't give it to me. Oh, this peace that I have, world didn't give it to me. Oh, Lord, this peace that I, by this time, praise and worship team be walking up. I be telling them, oh, they put some speed in their feet and hurry them get up. They're all of them too young to walk that slow. We give Mother Gail a pass, but the rest of y'all too young to walk that slow. Oh, the world didn't give it. Well, can't take it away. Yeah. I know Bree and Adrian and some of y'all other ones, Elder Blaine, I know y'all singing right where you are. You heard it. You picked it right up on your tune. That's called chemistry. Yeah, that's called chemistry. That's, that's how the Bulls won those uh, championships, chemistry. But the world can't do you no harm. You understand what I'm saying? Get that in your spirit. The world can't do you no harm. Now, all aspects of deliverance are available. Through the person and work of Jesus Christ. There it is again. All aspects of deliverance. Now, Romans 4 and 25 says, Who was delivered for our offense and was raised again for our justification. I'm a Bible preacher. Don't you love this word? I do. Now, let me tell you something right now. Only Jesus can rescue us from the wrath that's to come. Now, that's according to 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10. And to wait for his son from heaven, from he raised, for whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. From the wrath to come. Don't you worry about tomorrow. Mm -mm. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And like my, like, like one of my spiritual fathers would say, and who holds tomorrow holds my hand. <laughs> God, I thank you. Now, let me move on here. I got about one, two more closings and I'm done here. Thank you. Good and good on time. I've learned, I've learned that all deliverance is not demonic. Let me help you there. Sometimes when we start talking about deliverance, when we start talking about deliverance, I'm telling you, uh, yo, yo, check, check, y'all check and see if the heat is on. I'm telling you, I feel heat blowing in here. Make sure the heat is not on because, you know, here in Maryland, it's like 70 degrees today, and it's not always like this, like 35 degrees, and normally, you know, when I come to y'all, I try to keep my face on, but I'm, I'm telling you right now, I feel like I'm working the grill. Y'all check that heat for me. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Now, I've learned, I've learned, I've learned that all deliverance, all deliverance is not demonic. God, oftentimes, will have to deliver us from people Good God Almighty, from places and from things. He has to deliver us from people. He has to deliver us from some places and some things. You know, you can be hanging around the wrong folk. And it's not that you're aiming too high and miss. Sometimes you can be aiming too low and hit. And sometimes God got to get you away from people. A bunch of negative thinking people. That's, that's uh, you know, almost just draining the life out of you. And you got to say, God, you got to deliver me from this. You, you, you got to deliver me. You got to deliver me from, from, from these people. And then sometimes God got to deliver you from places. Places, places. That's why I say, it's vogue. you say places I used to go, I don't go no more. Things I used to say, I don't say no more. God has to deliver us from people, places. And he got to deliver us from things, you know, because sometimes you, you not deliver from stuff. People will hold it over your head. And make you think that if you don't compromise and do what it is that they want you to do. You know, when I first started pastoring some years ago, uh, 15 years ago, thank you, kind spirit. The Lord spoke to me in prayer and said, let me tell you something, Jason. Don't get hung up on people, places, or things. That's what the Lord told me. And I've been challenged in all three areas, people, places, and things. And God had to deliver me from people. He had delivered me from places and things. See, if you're not delivered from people, you won't preach the gospel full and free. You'll be worried about whether the people going to give, or worried about whether they're going to stay in your church, or whether, whether worried about this. Let me tell you something right now. That ought not be your concern. And I tell pastors and preachers all the time, now you don't beat up the people from the pulpit, but you cannot get to that place to where you won't preach the gospel full and free because you're afraid that this one won't give or that one won't give. I won't preach on homosexuality because this one here is dealing with that. And I won't preach on lesbianism because you're going to get in trouble with God. You got to preach the gospel. But watch this here, grace and mercy and truth. You got to preach it full and free. You understand me? And so when you get like that, you need to be delivered from people, from people. I went to a church one time 
And I'm telling you, the Lord dealt with me on something. And when I got up to begin to deal with the preacher, slid me a note. When he slid me that note, I read that note. I could not believe it. You know, and then I turned and I, I whispered in his ear and asked him, what was this about? And he began to tell me it was his family member, this, that, and the other. You know what? I preached it even the more because what you're not going to do is get up, get me out of, out of sync with God because you don't want to deal with something because there are some givers in your church, this, that, and the other. Family member. And can I tell you what happened to, that night? His family member got delivered. Boy, would have been delivered had he just gone and preached the gospel. Not that you're aiming at anybody, you know, but you're going and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to be delivered from people. You got to be delivered from places. You got to be delivered from things. All right. Now, let me say this to you here. Uh, one of my prayers, one of my prayers uh, since we've been in this quarantine, one of my prayers is, Lord, deliver me from me. Deliver me, Lord, deliver me from me. Now, I know a lot of y'all ain't going to attest to that one there. Uh, uh, but sometimes we need to pray, God, deliver me from me. You know, because it's not the devil. Come on, come on a little closer. It's not the devil making you eat all of that food. That ain't the devil. No, no, that's not the devil. No, you know, the devil is a liar. God, if you don't want me to have it, move it. No, you need to be delivered from you. Sometimes you can be your worst enemy. It's not external. Sometimes that internal enemy, you know, that internal enemy. And then you get upset when people ask you about stuff. My daughter came in the kitchen the, the other day, and, and she was very respectful. I was standing in there eating me some double stuffed Oreo cookies, and then I'm dipping me up a little bit of this here. And she looked at me, and she said, Daddy, are you hungry? And when she said that, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I know I'm, I'm not hungry, baby, you know. And she said, all right, well, you always say there's a day after this. You know, and I said, yeah, you, you right. She said, Daddy, now come on. come." And I had to pray that prayer. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I finished eating my cookies because, you know, <laughs> I finished eating them. You know, but I prayed afterwards, Lord, deliver me from me. You, you understand where I'm coming from? Yes, I did. I'm not going to sit here and tell you no tale. Like, I put them back in there. Somebody got to eat them. They in here. So I went on and I ate them, and I just said, listen, all right, Lord, deliver me from me in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all too. I just helped somebody. All right. Now, all right. Let me get on out of here. Let me get on out of here. Lord, deliver me from me. Now, now, please understand, please understand that we will never, we will never walk into our divine destiny apart from God's deliverance. We will never, you, you, you'll never get there apart from God's deliverance. God's got to deliver you out that he might deliver you into. Are right, you understand where I'm coming from? So whenever you start hearing about, oh, God is getting ready to do something great for you. God is getting ready to turn things around for you. God is getting ready to make a way out of no way. This, that, and the other. Now here comes deliverance. See, you, you, you got to be open for it. You got to be open for it. You know, and the Lord spoke to me and said, when we come out of this pandemic, when we come, I feel the prophetic, I tell you, when we come out of this here, he says, many people are going to come out delivered. They're going to come out delivered. They're going to come out delivered. They're going to come out delivered. It's like when a woman is pregnant with child and she has gone full term. I'm telling you right now, that baby, he, he said, I'm coming out of here. I, I got to come out of here. And it's nothing demonic about delivering. Watch this here. God, watch this here. God delivering you out so that he might deliver you in too. And the reason why I say this sometimes is because when we start talking about deliverance, people start thinking, oh, there go the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. And then you don't want to ask God to deliver you. You don't want to ask God, God, rescue me from this. God, get me out of this here. This is what the Bible says in Exodus chapter number three. I think I'm doing all right tonight in verse number eight. And I am come down. This is what God said. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. I got to get you out of that. Watch this here. To bring them up. There it is. Oh, my God. To bring them up. <clears throat> to bring them up. Out of that land unto a good land and a large land. Thank you there. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. I got to bring you out that I can bring you up. Good God Almighty. That I might bring you in. Woo! That's that kind of teaching Pastor Derek Burroughs be giving. He said, I got to bring you out that I might bring you up that I might bring you in. See, you want to go in, but you ain't came up. 
You ain't came up because you ain't came out. I'm telling you right now. See, if you're going to go in, you got to come up. If you're going to come up, you got to come out. And so he says, I got to deliver you. I got to deliver you. I got to deliver you. So this is one thing I love about life is that when the altar is open, I'm telling you, the people of God come to the altar. And when they come to the altar, I'm telling you, they come saying, God, deliver me. I know you saved. I know you're sanctified. And I know you're Holy Ghost filled. But in order for you to go in, you got to come up. In order for you to come up, you got to come out. And so you got to say, God, deliver me out of this. Lord, I need to be making six figures, seven figures. Deliver me out of this and deliver me up to that, that you might deliver me into this. I'm cooking with hot grease here. So this is what he began to say. Listen, I've heard your cry and I've heard your prayers. I've seen your affliction and I have come down to deliver you. This is what he told him in Exodus 3 and 8. I've come down to deliver you that I may take you into that land that I promised you. You're not going to get to your destiny. You're not going to get there, oh my God, apart from deliverance. Bless you, my brother, Pastor Pretlow. You're not going to get there apart from deliverance. And so this has to be your prayer. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Deliver. Lord, deliver me from me. Good God Almighty. Now, I want you to understand something here. By the time you get over to Exodus 6 and 6, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. Look what God is saying. I'm going to bring you out from under this burden. And I will rid you of their bondage. I'm going to get that off you. How am I going to do it? And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgment. I'm going to deliver you out of this thing. I'm going to deliver you out. And this is what you ought to be praying. You know, a lot of us, you know, I got to get my hustle on and I got to make more money and this, that, and the other. And, and you like a rat on that wheel, that little mouse on that wheel running around, can't get to it. And you wonder what's going on. You need to be delivered. God, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me from this small thinking. Oh, talk to me, somebody. Deliver me from this small thinking. Deliver me from this minuscule mindset. Deliver me from people. You know, sometimes you start worried about what people think. You know, I don't want to live over there because people are going to think this. And I don't want to drive that because people are going to think that. And I don't want to wear this for people are going to think that I rebuke that in Jesus' name. And I send deliverance to your house right now. God, deliver me. God, deliver me. God said, I got a 15 square foot, 15,000 square foot house for you. And you worried about what somebody going to think. That devil is a liar. You got to ask God, God, deliver me from that mindset. Deliver me. You know, and sometimes, if not careful, we'll start watering down who we are to make other people feel comfortable around us. You need to be delivered. You need to be delivered. Ask God to deliver you from that. You know what? Let me share something with you here. According to 1 Samuel chapter number 17 and 37, God is delivering his people from the hand of the enemy. Enemy think that he can control you and and, and hold your destiny. God says, no, I'm going to deliver you. Just like I delivered David from the paw of the lion and the bear. He says, I'm going to deliver you. Oh, my God. First Samuel 17 and 37. I'm going to deliver you. Even when he told Hezekiah, he said, I'm going to add seven. I'm going to add 15 years. Thank you. I'm about to give him two more years. I'm going to add 15 years to your life. He says, not only that, I'm going to deliver you from the Assyrians. Deliver you from the hand of the Assyrians. What good is it? For God to add years to your life and you had not be delivered. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You ask God to deliver you. God is delivering his people from the hand of the wicked. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something right now. Don't you fool yourself and think everybody loves you and like you. No, baby. The enemy is trying to plot and plan and hoping for your demise. And you got to ask God to deliver you. David wrote in Psalm 17. David wrote in Psalm 17. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from wicked. See, when you start reading this, 
It ought to increase your prayer. You ought to start praying like an African. You know, I'm, I got some African preacher friends of mine. They pray, they scare the hell out of you with their prayers. I'm trying to tell you, God, I pray now that you pull his heart out and that you rip his lungs out and that you rip his spleen out. You be sitting back saying, good God Almighty, you trying, Lord, bless my enemy. No, I pray now that you disappoint the enemy in the name of, I pray now. I pray. They, they pray for stuff like erectile dysfunction. They pray for stuff like dizziness and dry mouth and constant headache and diarrhea. See, a lot of us Americans, we pray these little pins windy prayer. You know, Lord, bless them in Jesus' name, and I pray now that you bless my... No, them Africans be praying. Lord, I pray now that you ruin his credit score. Bring it to garbage and nothing. Let his children and his children, children suffer. And you be like, good God Almighty. And they be backing it up with the word. And we be sitting there looking. They be like, it's right in the word, my man. Right in the word. Like, you know, you can't preach my church right now. Not, not right now. I gotta wait until I get them conditioned. You be done scared everybody out of there. But that's how they pray. And they start praying for deliverance. Start praying for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Psalms 18, Psalms 18, uh, verse number 16 says, He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. See that deliverance there? I'm going to stop soon as my time is up, so get as much as you can here. Watch this. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. So you got to be careful because of some you know, some informants there, folk that really don't like you. And if you just be praying, God, I just want to be accepted by everyone. No, God, deliver me from my enemies. Deliver me. Deliver me. You got to pray, God, deliver me from the strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too many for me. That's Psalms 18 and 17. God is delivering his people from satanic influence. I was in prayer the other night. Are y'all getting something out of this? Talk back to me. All right, I was in prayer the other night. I began to pray, Lord, 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 deliver your people. Deliver your people from this mentality of what the soothsayer has to say. From de Deliver them from the horoscopes. Come on, talk to me. Deliver them from them satanic influences. De de deliver God in the name of Jesus. Deliver. Uh, First Lady and I were driving down the street the other day. And uh, I tell you, I saw the thing about the lottery. And I said, ooh, God, in the name of Jesus. You know, we start praying that. Ooh, Lord, send the money in the name of Jesus. Lord, send the money. You put a tune to your prayer. Oh, Lord, send the money. Send the money. And after a while, you keep looking at that lottery. Before you know it, you done pulled over and bought you a few tickets. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Because you can't win if you don't play. That's what they tell me. And before you know it, you in there now, you done took your trust from God and you done put your trust in the lottery. Man, I tell you, all the hearts and lights and everything just stopped all at once. My God, the blood, the blood, the blood. Here they come again. You know, and, and if not careful, you start thinking on that and thinking that that's how God is going to bless you and, and so on and so forth. You know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, oh Lord, send the money, send the money. What's the lottery up to in the name of Jesus? What's this up to in the name? And first lady, now we driving down the street some time back and, and I said, oh baby, look at the lottery, it's up to this here, good God almighty look at the lottery, Lord, that lottery climbing, good God, she told me some Jay, are you praying, did God give you the numbers what is the Lord saying, huh? are you praying, are you seeking God, Do I this is what our first lady told me, do I need to turn my plate down this, that, and other, I said, mm, Lord I, you know, I was over in Galatians 5 and, and I was looking down at verse number 15, so maybe that's a 515 she said, you think that's what it is this, that, and that, that's why the Lord said, hey Wait a minute, I'll deliver you from that there. Don't you get caught in that because before you know it, after a while you're down at the casino and, and there you are, y'all ain't talking back to me. See, that's how the enemy, he's cunning. He'll draw you out. Before you know it, you're taking your house note. You got your car note. Come on, y'all ain't talking back to me. You got your child support. You got all that other stuff there and, and you're playing the lottery and you're playing, you got your tithe. And okay, I get on you in the street right there and you're doing all of that there and you're talking about, oh God, God, I know it's your will. God, you gave me the number because Bishop, he said, go to Acts chapter number eight, Matthew 28. Those were the numbers and I didn't hit. And now you done gave all your money away and now you need to be delivered. I'm preaching, teaching better than y'all saying amen. You need to be delivered. 
You need to be living. Why is Neil trying to text me while we online? He ought to be looking at the thing too. Somebody reach out and Minister Neil, tell him we online. He ought to be here. Don't text me while we online, Neil. Maybe he done forgot about it. Y'all help him. All right. You need to be delivered, Neil. We online, man. What you doing? Mm. Now listen, you got to be delivered from demonic influence. Got to be delivered from satanic influence. Uh, Acts chapter number 8. I'm coming on in. I got about 10 more minutes. Acts chapter number 8. It talks about uh, there was a man that was bewitching the people. And while he was bewitching the people, watch this here. The people believed that he was some something great. And my God, he heard the gospel. And when he heard the gospel, God delivered him, transformed his life. My God, in Acts chapter number 16, don't you love the word of the Lord? It says, and it came to pass when they went to prayer that there was a certain damsel there possessed with the spirit of divination. There it is. Met them out of there. And the Bible says, but Paul being grieved, turned. This is what he says in verse number 18. And said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out. Said to the spirit, come out. Called her out. Now, I want you to understand something right now. Deliverance is getting ready to hit your house. And I want you to begin to pray in the realm of the spirit that God will send deliverance. I want you to get this here. God send deliverance. Now, let me say this. How much time I got? I got oh, I got about eight minutes here. Deliverance and forgiveness go hand in hand. Are you with me? Deliverance and forgiveness go Go hand in hand. Now, here's forgiveness. Forgiveness is a deliberate act of love, grace, and mercy. Deliverance and forgiveness, they go hand in hand, all righty? Go hand in hand. Now, now, when you start talking about forgiveness, Bishop Jake said something sometime back that blessed me, I'm telling you. He said, forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. It's a gift that you give yourself deliverance and forgiveness. They go hand in hand. It's a gift that you give yourself. Forgiveness is an act of will. You, you, you got to do that thing. You know, I, I forgive. I, I forgive. You know, the Bible talks about over in Ephesians chapter number four, uh, and it even talks about in the gospel, you know, Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In Ephesians chapter four and 32, I'm going to let you go in a minute here. It says, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. Oh, my God. Forgiveness and deliverance. Deliverance and forgiveness. They, they go hand in hand. You're going to see something here in a minute. Now, now, forgiveness in relationship to salvation, it is impossible to have salvation or deliverance without forgiveness. Oh no, 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 no. And sometimes, you know, you know, we get to that place there. Oh Lord, Lord, save me. God said, no, all right, I'm gonna save you. I'm gonna forgive you of your sins, but I got to deliver you too. I got to get you out of that. I got to get you. I got to get you out of it. Salvation is God's deliverance from the consequences of sin. That's what it is. Salvation is God's deliverance from the consequences of sin. And I'm telling you right now, you got to get to that place there to where you say, God, I need your deliverance. I need your deliverance. I need your forgiveness, God. I got to forgive and I need it both. Now, God's salvation in Christ is the ultimate example of forgiveness and deliverance. That's what I said. I said salvation, God, the work of salvation is the ultimate example of forgiveness and deliverance. Forgiveness is an essential part of our salvation. You know, folk, we, we go out sometime, you know, I, I want folk to get saved. I want folk to get saved. I want people to get saved. And yes, I, I want folk to get saved too. But let me tell you something right now. Folk can get saved, but you got to deal with that deliverance. And, and, and sometimes you can't do this in a 60, uh, 45 minute service. I ain't getting no help. Let me put a dime in the meter here. You know, everybody want this popcorn church. 
You know, oh, I want to get back and, and hear me good. We come out of this quarantine. You know, I hear people go, oh, when I get to church, we can church all day. Yeah, but you got to realize not only would the church be open, the restaurant will be open, the movies be open, uh, all these other places be open. And if not careful, you go right back to your mindset that I need to be out of church in, in 60 minutes. But watch this here. When 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 you at the hospital and they perform a surgery, you don't tell that that doctor, doctor, I need you to hurry up and get me off this table. And and then he got you cut all open and you run. No, you say, Doc, take your time, sew me up real good. You understand me? And that's why when it comes to deliverance, when it comes to deliverance, that's why a lot of folk, you know, they being fooled by the devil. Yes, they are. You know, they, they being fooled by the devil and they just want to go in there. You know, this is what the Lord said to me. God said to me some time back, he said, Jason, folk want so much from me, but they want to spend so little time with me. How in the world you want so much from me, but you don't want to spend no time with me? This is a little that sizzle in your spirit. He said, when you spend time with me, I'm telling you, you can get so much from me. And the reason why some folk don't want to spend uh, uh, time with God is because they need to be delivered from something, something pulling on you, something, something pulling on you, something, something pulling you. And God said, I'm going to deliver that thing. I'm, I'm going to get you out of that. So that, and I'm not saying you need to stay in church three, four, five hours, but I'm telling you right now, when the power of God begins to flow and healing and deliverance and forgiveness begins to take place. And if you think we're going to come out of this pandemic and just go and have an ultimate praise break, yeah, we're going to dance, jump, and shout. I'm telling you right now, that's why I stretch my hamstrings on the regular, because I don't want to get no Charlie horse to lock up. But I'm telling you now, but more than that, there's some deliverance that's going to have to take place. Now, I, I want you to get this here. When you are forgiven, when you are forgiven, Jesus said, I dropped the charges. And there is no record of it. There, there's no record of it. I let it go. What time is it here? Oh, I got about four or five minutes here. He said, I dropped the charges and I let it go. Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Uh, look at verse number eight. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, is what the Bible says. Neither will he keep his anger forever. You know what? Now, how are you going to be like God still mad after four or five months? Come on now. Let me let that go right there. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Look at the word of the Lord. Don't you love it? Verse number 12, Psalms 103 and 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father pitieth his children. So the Lord pitied them that fear him. I want you to hear me good on this. Say, I'm coming on in. I'm enjoying this. I'm going to keep on reading and studying even after I come off here. But I want you to get this here. Jesus' primary purpose for coming into the world was to seek and to save that which is lost. According to Luke 19 and 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save which is lost. Now that seeking and saving... <clears throat> that which is lost speaks of deliverance and forgiveness. See, it's this type of teaching right here. I'm telling you right now that that, that I'm telling you that that draws sinners to the foot of the cross. It's this type of teaching right here that 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 will take folk and pull them out of dark places and bring them and and watch God clean them up and do great and mighty things for them. That that speaks of deliverance and forgiveness. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Now, let me close here. Remember our lesson aim. Our lesson aim was that you would gain a greater confidence in Christ's power for deliverance and forgiveness. I'm going to pray. Now, hear me good as a prophet of the Lord. You're going to need this confidence. You're going to need, hear me good, you're going to need this confidence. Hear me? If you don't take nothing else out of here, hear me good, you are going to need this confidence for the confrontation that is coming on the other side. Hear me as a prophet. Thank you, kind spirit. You're going to need this confidence because when you come out of this, you're going to be, you're, you're going to be confronted on the other side. If you think that when we come out of this pandemic that everything is just going to be howdy, howdy and, and, and just, just walking through the tool if the devil is a liar, that's why God said, call my people into prayer. And as you begin to call them into prayer, he says, I'm going to heighten their awareness in the realm of the Holy Ghost. 
I'm going to heighten their awareness for what it is that I want to do in them, through them, for them, and around them. Because when you come out of this and you get to the other side, thank you, kind spirit, just like Jesus, you're going to be confronted. The Bible talks about in Matthew chapter number eight, and when he was come to the other side, the Bible says there met him two men possessed with the devil. Oh my God, don't you think for one second when you come out of this, you're not going to have to confront demonic activity. Hear me, good people of God, the devil is upset. The devil is mad. The Bible says that he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. I want you to get this blood wash, believers. Get it down in the city of your soul. Begin to pray and fast and seek God like you've never sought him before because you're going to be confronted. And all every time that you're confronted won't always be in the four corridors of the church. Wouldn't always be in the four walls of the church. The enemy will try you in your home. The enemy will try you, good God Almighty, on your job. The enemy will try you in the marketplace. But you have to realize that even when the enemy tries you, God's plan, God's will, and God's agenda is for forgiveness and deliverance. Good God Almighty. The Lord spoke to me, hey, my God, in prayer and said, I'm raising up agents. I'm raising up Holy Ghost filled warriors. Those who have not been sitting back misusing this time, but those who have been saying, God, I've been going after you like I've never gone after you before, God. Raise up in me right now, God. Spring up a well in me for forgiveness and deliverance. The Bible says that Jesus was confronted. And when he was confronted, the Bible says those demonic spirits begin to cry out. I want you to hear me right now, blood wash believers. Churches that are not ready to deal with demonic activity will begin to shut down. People that just want to entertain their congregations and act as if they just want their money tithing and offering. God says, I'm bringing that agenda to a close. He says, I have an agenda for my people and my agenda for my people is deliverance and forgiveness. The Bible says in verse number 29 of Matthew chapter number 8 that they begin to cry out. And when they begin to cry out, they begin to say, what have we to do with thee, son of God? Are thou come hither to torment us before time? And I'm serving notice on the devil that your time is just about up. You're going to have to loose your hope from the people of God. You're going to have to loose your demonic curse from the people of God. In the name of Jesus, so therefore confronting. And then the cry. And then the Bible says Jesus gave an authoritative command. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. You're going to have to cry loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. And he said unto them one word. Go. You hear me in the realm of the spirit. God is getting ready to anoint you. God is getting ready to give you that authority and power as you and your family seek God. Oh, my God, for three days, my God, as you begin to seek God for three times a day with your families for the next three days. God said, I'm giving you this authority and I'm giving you this power. He says, because you're going to be confronted. And I feel it in the realm of the spirit right now that some of you are saying, Bishop, I'm being confronted right now. I'm being confronted with demonic activity even now. And even as you're being confronted with it, I hear God simply saying that the reason why they're fussing, the reason why they're arguing, the reason why they're screaming and hollering is because that enemy is crying out. Ah, oh, my God. I was in the house the other day and I found myself saying some things that I ought not say. And I said, say Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And God simply says, if it don't come up, it can't come out. You got to hear me, blood wash believers. Sometimes you got to rebuke the devil in yourself. Hear me as a prophet of the Lord. Deliverance and forgiveness is coming to the people of God. Watch what happens. He commanded that spirit to come out. But let me tell you what happened. And I want you to read it when you get a chance. In verses 33 and 34, it says, They went out into the city and compelled everybody to come. And the Bible says that when they came after the confrontation, after the cry, after the gate command, the Bible says they urged 
Jesus to leave their coast. What are you saying, preacher? Get ready for rejection. Get ready for people to want to walk away from you and say that there's nothing to you. But I got good news for you, baby. Redirection is coming. They may reject you on one side, but God is going to redirect you on the other side. And that's why he picks up in chapter number nine and verse number one and says, and he passed over. I've got to get out of here because I feel the Holy Ghost moving on the inside of me. Let me tell you something right now. Pass over it. Don't pass under it. Don't pass through it. Pass over it. The Lord said to me, he said, Jason Brownlee, everything you don't pass over, you're going to live under. And I break that off of your life right now. You will no longer live under looking down on yourself. You will no longer live under feeling sorry for yourself. You will no longer live under holding on to the past. The devil is a bold-faced liar, and I need somebody to open your mouth and begin to shout to God right where you are. I'm passing over this. I'm passing over low self-esteem. I'm passing over this mental anguish. I'm passing over everything that the enemy has ever tried to come against me with. The devil is a liar, and the one thing you have to do is not only forgive others, but you've got to forgive yourself. When you caught, oh my God, when you you start asking God for deliverance, when you start asking God for forgiveness, God says, I'm getting ready to allow you to pass over. And the Bible says, good God Almighty here, that when they passed over, he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Let me tell you something, blood-washed believers, as you pass over, God has a place just for you. And the Bible says, and behold, they brought one unto him who was sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And this is what the Bible says. Jesus saw their faith. I want you to get this in your spirit right now. God doesn't want to see how big your gift is. God doesn't want to hear how big your mouth is. God doesn't care how big your house is. He's not concerned about what type of car you drive. No, what he wants to see is your faith. And I begin to pray to God. I begin to pray and say, God, more than anything in the world, I want you to see the faith of the people, God. God, forgive me and deliver me, oh God, for sometimes looking at their outward appearance, God, and help me see the heart, oh God. Help me to understand that your people must display their faith in the name of Jesus. I'm getting ready to get out of here, beloved. But the Bible says that when he saw their faith, this is what he says right here in verse number two. Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven thee. What are you saying, Bishop? If you don't bless God for nothing else, bless him because guess what? He has forgiven your sins. What are you saying, preacher? Past sins, present sins, future sins. I need somebody to type that in there. I am forgiven. That's right. I am forgiven. You may not ever forget it, baby, but guess what? I am forgiven. But guess what the Bible says? He says, wait a minute. While he did this, there was the scribes standing around, and they begin to say within themselves, this man is blaspheming. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, where ye think evil in your hearts. Hear me, good people of God. God is getting ready to give you that discernment to where you're going to be able to understand what people are thinking even before they say it. Good God Almighty, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. He said, is it easier for me to say to the man, thy sins be forgiven thee or rise up and walk? What are you saying, preacher of God? I'm going to tell you right now, your deliverance is connected to your forgiveness here. Your forgiveness is connected to your deliverance. And the Bible says that the man took up and began to walk and departed into his own house. And when he went into his own house, the Bible says, I feel the presence of God. The Bible says, 
They begin to marvel. They begin to become mesmerized. They were discombobulated and begin to glorify God. I've got to close my Bible, but I'm nowhere near finished. I want you to hear me something right now. God is getting ready to use you to shock the world. God is getting ready to use you, my God, to baffle those who are standing around who are wondering how in the world is God going to do this here? God says, when I see your faith, I'm releasing forgiveness. When I release forgiveness, I'm going to give authoritative command and show my force in the earth. When I do this, people are going to stand around and wonder, what must I do to be saved? And this is my prayer for you tonight that God will anoint you right now with power of the Holy Ghost, that God God will anoint you right now with authority that you will begin to forgive yourself, that you will begin to ask God for deliverance in the name of Jesus. I've got to get out of here, but know that I am praying for you. As I sign off, know that I am praying for you and God is sending deliverance to your house in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying that God will send deliverance. Hey, Mashitaha. In the name of Jesus. Deliverance, oh God. Deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I need about a hundred of you all right now that's believing God for deliverance to begin to open your mouth and say, God, I thank you for total deliverance. I thank you for victory. I thank you for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And you watch what God does for you. You watch what God does for you in the name of Jesus. And for this, we say thank you. And for this, we say thank you. And we bless you for it right now in Jesus' name. Share that word. Share this word with as many people as you can in the name of Jesus. I forgive myself. Thank you, Jesus. God, deliver me. I forgive myself in the name of total deliverance. In the name of Jesus. For this we say thank you. And we bless you for it. In the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 Send deliverance. I send it to your house. You send it back to my house. I send it to your house. You send it back to my house. I send it to your, I send forgiveness to your house. You send it back to my house. You send it to somebody else's house. Somebody else will send it to your house. In the name of Jesus. And when we come out of this, we're coming out of this delivered and forgiven. In Jesus' name. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sow your seeds. Give your tithing and offering. Give now. Give now. I've been asking for 4210, and I want y'all to keep that going. This is outside of your tithing and offering. I want you to sow that seed. Let's break the back of debt right now. In the name of Jesus. God, we bless you right now. In the name of Jesus. I love you. I pray the peace of God be upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. I'll see you back here. I'll see you back here. Saturday at 7 o'clock. I love you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. I love you, Bunny. I love you, Mikey. I love you, Mother Gail. I love you, Elder. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I love you. Take that word. Make it your prayer agenda. Pray with your families three times a day for the next three days. Bless you, Deacon Kearns. God bless you. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. My God, Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Jazzy, get me out of this. I feel the anointing of God. In the name of Jesus. Get me out, baby. Send me off. Yanando Robaman Sishekemaha. In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. 